I'd like to talk about why shit matters. <laughs> what I want to do for you today is change your ideas what which would happen with our human waste. And I'm going to take you on a trip around the world and introduce to you some of the newest trends in waste conversion and resource recovery. But let's start with basics, with pee and with poo. We produce pee and poo on a daily basis, since the day we are born. And when pee and poo comes together and is flushed down our toilets with flush water, it turns into wastewater. In a sewerless context, these two become fecal sludge. And those are the two main elements I'm going to show for today. Why is this important? Because this guy here is responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths around the world. That's due to the pathogens, the viruses found in our human waste that contaminate the environment when waste is not safely managed. And that's why in our developed countries, we've been improving waste management systems over the past decades and introducing sophisticated systems like the one shown here. This is the central wastewater treatment plant for the city of Zurich in Switzerland. It treats the entire waste of the city, so over half a million people, and it does this very efficiently and very effectively. To do this, it needs a constant supply of know-how, money, energy, and, of course, vast amounts of fresh water to flush our waste down the toilet into these treatment plants. And it does this, of course, through these huge underground sewer networks. These networks are very expensive to build and also quite expensive to maintain over the decades and centuries. If we were to reinvent this system for our cities today, would we go for the same system? I doubt it. And it's definitely not an answer for these kind of contexts the sewerless cities of Africa and Asia. These are resource-poor settings that hardly have the water to provide their populations with drinking water, let alone flush sewers into treatment plants. In these kind of settings, this is what waste management looks like. These two gentlemen from Nairobi have just emptied a pit latrine and are now dumping their waste into any open water body contaminating the environment around them. In these kind of settings, these two technologies are the most commonly found, the pit latrine and the septic tank. The septic tank and the pit latrine are used by about 3 billion people worldwide in all of the cities that don't have sewer systems and wastewater treatment plants, and they are not very effectively managed. And this animation here shows you how it's managed. This exhauster truck is picking up the waste, bringing it outside of town, and because there is no treatment plant, it dumps it into any open water body or canal, recontaminating the entire neighborhood or city. Let me introduce the Nair family. The Nair family, a family of four, live in a low-income area of Kochi in India, and they produce on a yearly basis 2,200 liters of pee and poo. And they need somewhere between 50 and 60,000 liters of flush water to dispose of this waste. And if we multiply this by hundreds of thousands for the entire city of Kochi, this is what we get. The shit flow diagram of the city of Kochi. And what it shows is the entire waste produced by the population of this city on the left, the red arrows. And basically, what it tells us is how waste moves across the sanitation chain from the toilet to disposal. And you can see for the city of Kochi, less than a third of this waste is being safely managed. And over two-thirds are unsafely managed, like I've shown before. Surely there must be a better way of dealing with this situation in the cities of the developing world. 
And that is exactly what I'd like to show to you. I think the way forward has to be that we realize that waste is actually a resource and not something to dispose of. And that is the case because we can tap into the nutrients and the energy that is found in waste. Why is that? Because human waste is one of the only natural resources that is renewable, produced locally, very locally, and growing. And it's growing, of course, because of population growth. What I'd like to show you are four processes and technology that allow us to transform waste into something more productive. I'll show you biogas. I'll show you how to produce poo pellets. I will show you how to produce a fertilizer out of urine. And finally, how to transform our waste into a, a protein-rich animal feed. We'll be using three main streams of waste, and that is, of course, pee, poo, and also organic waste that we produce on a daily basis, for example, kitchen waste. Let's start off with biogas. Biogas is certainly the most popular and widespread of these four technologies. Hundreds of thousands of these units exist around the world, and there's a simple reason for that. They're easy to operate, they hardly have any spare parts, they're built underground, so they save space, and they produce a gas, that is methane and CO2, that can be used at a household level. This gas that is produced and builds up in this chamber of the digester is then usable at household level for cooking or for heating. Very popular around Asia, far in China and South Asia. Moving on to the next technology, this is the production of an industrial fuel from fecal sludge. Sounds disgusting, but it's very effective and easy to do. All you need to do is push this fecal sludge through this uh, pelletizer, and you, through the compression, produce these poop pellets. The poop pellets then dry, they need about two to three days of passive drying, like you should see here in Kampala, Uganda. And after drying, they can be packaged and sold off as an industrial fuel. This fuel is an interesting alternative for a number of industries, especially those that need high amounts of energy through oil or petrol, example given the cement industry. If the Nair family would make use of its human waste, they could produce about six bags of these pellets per year. Moving on now from energy production to capturing the nutrients that we find in our waste, I'd like to introduce how to make a fertilizer out of urine. And this is a process and a technology that we've been um, working on for about a decade now at our research institute at Erwag, and this is now ready for commercialization. The Three steps needed are stabilizing the urine, polishing it, and then distilling, taking out the water that is in our urine, because 99% of our urine is, are actually made out of water. The final product is then a certified fertilizer that is certified by the Swiss uh, agricultural authorities for use in agriculture anywhere. Let me show you the three processes. So this is the stabilization. This is where we bind the volatile ammoniac through nitrification. Second step is then polishing, taking out the micropollutants. And the third step is drying, taking out the excess water. What we then get is this final uh, fertilizer on the left-hand side that you can see, which contains all the nutrients that are also interesting for plant growth, phosphorus, nitrogen, and potassium. The Nair family could produce 90 liters of this fertilizer if they were to use source-separating toilets that separate urine from the poop. And you can see two models here. On the left-hand side, a flush-based urine toilet as we use it in our institute, or the dry Mosan toilet with also two chambers to separate pee from poop. The last technology I'd like to present to you today 
is transforming waste into an animal feed. This is certainly one of the newest trends in waste transformation, and it's quite simple. We're using the black soldier fly. This is a fly that grows and thrives in warm climates and feeds on anything organic. And after they pupate, the larvae go into a feeding frenzy. They feed on anything that is organic, human waste, junk food, like you see here, or anything that uh, comes out of the kitchen, kitchen waste, and so on. During this process, the larvae grow to about two, two and a half centimeters. They are basically made out of protein and fat and are therefore a valuable replacement for expensive uh, animal feed like uh, soybean or fish meal. We can also feed this live. Uh, this is an Indonesian farmer feeding his chickens with live larvae. They love these little squirmy worms. And again, the Nair family could produce 50 kilos of animal feed using their organic and their human waste in the course of a year. Ladies and gentlemen, I've shown you four technologies and processes that are ready to go to overcome badly managed waste disposal in cities of the developing world by systematically transforming and turning waste into a renewable a reuse product through biogas or poo pellets, tapping into the nutrients found in urine, and transforming the organic waste and human waste into a protein-rich animal feed. I believe with the right business models and financial incentives, we will see a step change in how waste is managed in the future of these cities. And also cl create cleaner and healthier cities of the South. And that's why shit matters. Thank you. Thank you.